you know what? I'm pretty darn happy that uh, I wasn't expecting, I know you won't be able to see all the specifics, <clears throat> excuse me, but I'm really surprised and I'm glad I ended up using the, um, the red starburst things for, though these are um, points of interest or conflict areas or places I would like the Russians to leave. How's that? Um, and there's a ton of them as you can see. Um, yeah, you can't see certain things I doubt, um, like for example, there's like little arrows uh, just showing me for later like how I'm going to get certain things. And certain combats are not going to happen this turn, uh, but I need them to happen this turn. Uh, not this turn, but they're going to uh, have to happen. This is probably going to take about two turns, I think. Like I said, you're probably not going to be able to see everything. This is a lot of stuff for me to... Um, um, yeah, I just need to, and yet again, I would say a good significant percentage of this is um, um, self-imposed problems. I'll give you a perfect example here. This has got absolutely nothing to do with Dervelkrieg, and if I followed the Dervelkrieg rules, um, this would not be an issue at all. It's a massive issue, and there's another massive issue over here. I'm really into the command and control thingamajig or whatever, and it may be... <laughs> what I'm into or it may not be right or it doesn't matter I'm like still learning so anyways here's first core um, and these are the uh, units that are under first core I want them to attack here they've got the most strength points I'll start moving some supply points over to there these guys have got a uh, sweet PL. Um this is the uh, second core over here for the Austro uh, Austrians Remember, everything east of the Visloka, which is right here, is under their, their control. And uh, actually, the Germans have asked them, for the love of God, can you just move your freaking troops across the border and engage here, or at least secure that area? We are, you have no idea how close we can to um, surrounding the 4th Army. We could take out a second Russian army in a period of, like, basically two months. It's just insane. Um, but no. Uh, the Austrians have said, no, we're not. Uh, we've got enough problems to deal with. And they do. <clears throat> um, and they're, you know what, uh, quite happy with what they've done. Um, part of the, yeah, I know that the Germans here, you know, are here. But they've done, they could, I think, personally, <clears throat> excuse me, done a hell of a lot without the Germans there anyway. So tough. They're feeling pretty good about themselves. They've got other things to worry about. Namely, getting these uh, Russians out of a lot of spots. And it's going to require a lot of... Um, a lot of manpower, a lot of supply. They don't have a ton, and they still haven't uh, received the 10 supply points that the uh, Germans were supposed to do. So sorry, this sucks on a grander level. And even on from, I think, from the Austrians' point of view, it's kind of like from a politician's. They're like, Jesus Christ, can you just do it? Because can you not understand, if we've got troops there, later on, if we win the war, we can say, well, we are, you know, in negotiations, we could take this over. Jesus, are you not thinking? They're not. They're thinking they got other stuff to worry about. Which is, there's barely nobody here. There's two, three, four, <clears throat> six strength points for the entire second core. So screw you. <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll condense, and these guys have been bitching and whining the fourth, uh, f the fourth army over here. Um, well, fourth army direct the gray guys over here. Who are these guys over here? That would be... Uh, hold on here, 4th Army, I've got to look them up, uh, so you would be great. Where are you, 4th Army? I don't see you. 4th Army, you're that color. Oh, so you're the 8th Corps, thank God, okay. I was losing my mind here. As in, like, all my, all this little work going with color coding and everything, trying to figure out things that may not work. Hold on, let me get some water, for Christ's sake. <clears throat> I haven't talked to anybody except a bloody cat. Sorry, Leo. I shouldn't be just calling you a cat. <clears throat> Here we go. And I shouldn't have been doing this video. I've been trying so hard to try to get back to sleep and resetting, but there's just been so much going on. Anyways, you can see there's a hell of a lot of red, um, uh, red areas of interest. Doesn't mean they're all going to happen. I'll go step by step. Um, and um, I'm sticking with my core things and I'm sticking with my structure and I'm doing what I'm doing and if you want to go along for the ride enjoy man
And like I said, if you want to also criticize the living hell out of it, go for it as well. Um, here we go. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen areas of of potential conflicts that will happen this turn. Not all of them, but uh, a significant number of them. Remember, I've I've mentioned before. Um, the Germans primarily have got a ton of strength points and um, uh, a lot of supply points, so that's the way it goes. Uh, so I'll, get, I'll go a little bit with the color coding or what the heck I'm doing or some of the command structure, and yet this has been massive for me. I don't care. Um, so on a side note, I am going to say this. If you see the, this guy over here, um, uh, the 10th Corps, um, any of these guys, the little red, I don't know what number that is. Is, is it Epsilon? I'm going to have to look that up number. Well, oh, God, I love that. I love that. Um, I love that number, the Greek number. Epsilon is just a beautiful number. Anyways, <clears throat> this is uh, under Garrison, um, Charles Tortoise, the Garrison Corps commander. And in my command structure, he is independent. Um, he's not attached to uh, the Eastern Europe conflict zone um, uh, commander, which is, uh, or commanders, which is, uh, Hindenburg and Ludendorff over here in Posen. They, uh, don't have, they can't tell him what to do. He's, uh, controlled by, I guess, Falcon. I'm not sure who's, uh, whatever in that, uh, at this, at this point. And he's also, um, can also in a bizarre way, um, uh, so I'm getting down to this here. This is what I'm calling the strategic reserve. Um, this is their ultra escape mode. They would love to put more um, into the str strategic reserve. This is like a break in case of uh, emergency, a break glass in case of emergency or whatever the thing it's called. So these guys, for example, Hindenburg and Ludendorff can ask, request, hey, by the way, can we have some of these uh, strength points or some of these divisions that are sitting here from the strategic reserve to go somewhere? Um, Charles Tortoise can say yay or nay, but he's not allowed, not allowed to do that until um, guaranteed for a fact that these that can be replenished um, in that turn. Um, or the beginning of it. like there's no effing around here um, uh, I'm not having any of this uh, the only time you can use that to and like there's not coming back it's when the Russians are, are not leaving kind of thing is what I'm trying to say um, so the longer these stay and more is put in and not used I'd be happy and it's in a good central area that's what I'm trying to look at so you've also got the fifth uh, core, which is also under um, control by Charles Tortoise, and that is also uh, those uh, Festung. Remember, he, what he's been doing is orchestrating um, all the garrison troops from all the fortresses, getting them ready, all the support staff, and all that stuff, all the paperwork, all the freaking talking back and forth, and trying to figure out who the hell's going, and this scheduling with rail and everything else. Um, getting things ready so in breslau um uh the fifth corps commander we we'll look him up later um he's in charge basically of supplying the festung division the, the F fortress divisions um into this into this sector into this area here um uh, which would be the tritown area and potentially uh Wuj, uh warsaw thing um then like i said the, the strategic reserve then you also have over here Lotzen, uh, the Ninth Corps commander, and uh, primarily, um, um, you know, uh, doing the East Prussian, uh, the Konigsberg. Actually, what do what do I call it? The Pregel River sector, I do believe. Um, so there we go. Um, because at the beginning, I think that's all it was, and then it was like the Russians just never left. It was like what the hell, and uh, so there you go. Um, uh, I'm extremely into this uh, moving. So I'll give you another example of. Okay, we'll go to the first headache from hell. Uh, is what I'm talking about here. Is this one? 
And it's because it, and you know, oh yeah, there's another thing I would love to talk about and I'm going to start incorporating it yet again. Like I said, if you're along for the ride, go for it. And, and you want to say you're being a twit or that, go for it as well. Um, you know, but like I said, this is my um, narrative also to, you know, enjoy f um, finding out about, wow, it's just this fascination of World War I and, and just the whole thing. It's just like, kaboom. I, why do I have to keep justifying? Look, I'm into what I'm doing. End of. All right. I don't like, the, I've never have ever in my life enjoy, I don't like the term uh, zone of control. I don't like the term enemy zone of control. I don't like the term, I don't like people saying Zoc. I don't like people saying Ezoc. I never have. Okay. Never. I love threat zone. To me, that makes a hell of a lot more sense. Um, I make, you know, or, if you want to get into zone of influence, fine. If you want to get into it, but I love threat zone. I love it, so I'm sticking with threat zone. So, anyways, going through this uh, this German threat zone because they they can nail nail us in some ways. It's going to take a a long time, so I can't do it in two terms. And I could if I was just following the Der Weltkrieg rules. It wouldn't matter. I just say, Chris, it doesn't doesn't exist these core bullshit things that you're doing you just move them around what are you doing as long as you don't uh, break the six division uh, per hex rule you're fine like shush shush nope I'm going with the way I'm going um, and yeah you could say well then you could just say the four uh, uh, the first army commander which is doing sweet pee all he's got absolutely nobody in this control so I'll have to figure out something about that but anyways um you know, hey, you could just reassign, which I've done like a lunatic, but I'm trying to like reel myself in, you know, or ring myself in or whatever the term is. Um, so I'll have to figure this out. Oh, it's a crazy. Oh, I thought I had it last night too. I was like, you sneaky little devil. I was like, no, you don't. I thought I did too. I was so ultra happy. So, but anyways, it's there. This is kind of like, um, I don't know, your own little, my own little version of a Rubik's Cube. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm just looking at terrain. I'm also, like I said, okay. This map, and that's why, like I said, uh, was probably the hugest turnoff for me in this game uh, twice. <laughs> Well, I remember the fellow well, th several times actually when I seen this ma uh, map and several guys is either online or you know in front of my face or whatever and just con constantly going new new and like I've said before in our previous video some people remember um, it reminds me very much of um, the first or several times I heard the ninth wave from K uh, Kate Bush I was like this has got to be the biggest piece of shit I've ever heard in my life. And it ended up becoming, um, well, for me, it's the, uh, the end all be all for pieces of music. I just absolutely adore it. Um, and then I'm looking at this and now I just go, oh my God, it just allows me, it facilitates the narrative so much. It is mind boggling. I'm just like, because he put in each fucking hex side is a, is separate and then you've got a hex i'm just like it's just like yes sir i love you um i just love it to bits uh end of yeah i'll have to do like uh bring in the camera the camcorder and so i can you know uh potentially show, especially when i get into the specifics i'm uh, uh i think i mentioned this a few times i've had i didn't clue in of course i stare at this all the time and uh, uh, not all the time. There's been a few times I, you know, gone away, do a, a done other things, or, like for an extended period of time. My version of an extended period of time, and um, you know, I come back. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And there's other people. Of course, they haven't like either. This is the first time they've looked at it, or they haven't seen it in several months or weeks, whatever. And then it's like, of course, they don't know what the. They're look. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know what's going on with the F word there. But, um, they're, you know, actually I do know, but it's a long story. Um, like several layers long story in my head. Anyways, um, I've got to remember, like, to explain sometimes. So maybe with the viewers, like, when I get close up, 
a rehash is what I'm trying to say because there is a lot of gobbledygook or there's a lot it's busy is what I'm trying to say yeah it's very busy however it's a nice busy there's no uh you know you're thinking hey well, you don't like stacking yeah I don't like stacking because I can't see what the hell's underneath I can tell you what the hell uh if there's anything underneath a freaking counter I can tell you what the hell it is it's only one of two things it's either a fortress or it's a screwed up railroad that's it end of okay Jesus H like it just drives me up the mental tree so that's that um, and like I said all the other stuff it's just right in front of my face and if I want to get super specific I can go off to the book for Christ's sakes this one's a giant one you probably won't see it there's like one two three four five six seven well eight oh hold on one two three four five six seven eight there's eight pieces of information here on this counter and then there's something underneath. Well, I know um, where it is from, uh, that it's um, uh, 40 kilometers away from Prague, uh, pra oh, whatever, 40 uh, kilometers away from Konigsberg, that it's a, uh, it's a screwed up railroad underneath there. Um, so, uh, what else is the, I can tell you about it? Well, it's German. It's got a little German flag. Uh, it's BG number three in the middle. So I can go up, take a look at the book for the specificity of what the hell's going on here. Uh, the Ninth Army HQ is actually there because it's got that uh, that specific Alberto marker type look to it. It's also got some cavalry there. It's also got some engineers there and that color coding thing. It's brand new. It's just to tell me that who else is belonging uh, command wise to uh, the Ninth Army, which is Shooterman, I do believe. Shooterman, something like that. Um, so that would be these guys here. You know, he's going to nail. i got to get rid of these trenches, man. There's one turn away. Screw this. Um, and he's got 10 supply points and uh, two strength points of infantry. That's what I know. That's pretty flippin' good. I can tell you that quickly. You go do that, I can, uh, and I can go back and forth, lip, lickety split baba trick. And I can tell you, though, I can tally up uh, the whole army super duper quick, strength point wise. And I'd like to see you do that, um, or anybody else do that with their flipping um, official by the book, uh, Dravelkrieg stacked counters or whatever. And I can and say, okay, how many strength points do you have? And we'll see how quick I can do it. Versus you, you can say, whoa, Chris, you did it all beforehand. Well, it is all beforehand on your counters. It's just you stacked them, you tit. So, and I didn't. I went and, and did all the other stuff ahead of time, and I love it because I can start seeing patterns and start seeing things. And I need to, um, it's weird, eh, to add clutter, you get rid of clutter. It's, uh, I just love it. Um, so there you go. I'm just trying to figure out areas where I can go, and uh, yep, uh, I'm screwed now for sleep, aren't I? Damn it! Why do I keep doing this? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, I suppose I have to go back to the doctors where it's like, you know, my birthday's coming up, so it's like that uh, physical thingamajig and whatnot. So maybe, uh, which would be good. I mean, like I've said, two things um, I've always uh, believed in is um, skin and biochemistry. Um, uh, well, basically skin and blood uh, are the two. You can't, you, can't, uh, you can't run from them. You can pretend, but you can, uh, you can't get away from those two. Nope, 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 unless we, you know, figure out some ways of um, coming up with, like, several layers of being able to, you know, being able to see people's organs while you, you walk walk around or something and go, holy shoot, you know, your, your lungs look like living hell because you've been, you know, doing whatever or uh, just let you know, by the way, your liver looks like it's about to, like, you know, explode in about three seconds or whatever. You get the idea. That type of stuff. I mean, we don't have that type of... Um, Type of diagnostic ability, I guess. Not right now. I don't know, wandering around with tricorders every five seconds. Oh, yeah, that's it. I better shut up. But look at this, eh? Sweetie Petey. I love you. All right. I do. I really do.